Greetings ladies and gentlemen, Dwyron here, and this is something a little bit different. I guess this is um, a lecture, technically. Uh, this is one of the games that I played on TyGem just last night. I was going to upload this thing in its entirety in its own little video. Uh, unfortunately, I've been, for those of you who have been paying attention to my stream, you'll already know this. I've been battling with my ISP for about two weeks now trying to figure out why I keep getting disconnects and uh, the fight continues apparently. I got disconnected like, I don't know, three times in this game. It was not pretty. Uh, so I thought I'd go ahead and review it because normally if I just didn't during a game, I'd just say screw it, ditch the game and just play another one. But this one actually had a lot of things that I wanted to bring to your attention, especially it kind of goes along with what I was mentioning um, in my last official lecture which was the part two of the things that Q should stop doing. I briefly mentioned balance, but this game is perfectly lined up with the whole balance idea uh, in the person who I played against. It's almost as if I played this game for the lecture I gave last week. So, I don't know, maybe I gave a lecture one week too early, because this would have gone extremely well with it. So what you're going to see in this game is the concept of balance. Now, I mentioned in that lecture that there's a couple of different types of people that are all making the same mistake and they're not kind of like adhering to the balance of the game. For example, if you are a super aggressive player and you know about fight, 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 you are kind of the same as a person who is super passive and just tries to take large points and defend, 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 and never attacks. I mean, in both cases, you're not paying attention to the balance of the game. If you're only attacking, then are you really getting points? That could be a problem. If you're only defending, then your opponent can, you know, just get away with whatever they want to do throughout the course of the entire game. So a, a balance really has to be struck, no matter if you want to be an aggressive player or more of like a passive solid-ish player, you kind of have to strike that balance. My opponent in this game, uh, on Taijem, doesn't strike that balance at all. He is a prime example of the aggressive variety where all he does is fight, 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 and you'll see what happens to him as a result. So in this particular game, I'm black. Uh, my opponent is white. I see this opening and immediately I go into a bit of a defensive pattern. I go orthodox because I have no idea how he wants to use these stones, which are very, very unorthodox, not 3-4, not 4-4 four, four points. So I just take my happy little enclosure here and kind of throw the ball back into my opponent's court. It's like, how do you want to use this? Because I have no idea what you're doing here. So you show me what you're doing here, and then I'll, I'll figure out what to do about that. So all right, ball back into my opponent's court. Splits me because he does not want me to get uh, extension. All right. Little bit of an aggressive play, but that's fine. So here I approach because I'm again demanding to know the answer to the question of what he wants to do. Uh, ideally speaking, at, when we do see the split, for example, we want to play this kind of variation. And if this was a 4 4 point, we would like to approach. So we can maybe back off and get our, our extension from our enclosure, either you know high or low, whatever. Uh, if this was a 3-4, I'd approach here for the exact same reason. I felt that I didn't want to do this because this is going to be a little bit close to this stone. This stone is just being uh, encouraged to get an enclosure. I don't really want to give my opponent an enclosure. I mean, I guess I can take some large points, but now I'm inviting him to get two enclosures and not liking how this game is uh, turning out for black as a result. Uh, I also don't want to just make this exchange without anything to back it up with. So I play here first. Maybe a good move, maybe not a good move. In hindsight, maybe playing the old... Maybe playing the uh, older variation might be the better option here. Still uh, encourages the enclosure, but nothing to defend. I can maybe block the other one. I don't know. Hard to say. Hard to say. But I see here very aggressive uh, variation here. He's trying to encourage me to play the Taisha. All right. So I never actually go with that when I usually attach here as a result. 
He gets influence, I get territory. Seems reasonable. This is going to be the only defensive move he plays for the rest of the game. So let's recap so far. Um, this bit of an aggressive move. We could say this is an aggressive move because you're actively trying to block what your opponent wants to do. So a little bit of an aggressive move there. Inviting one of the most complicated Jiseki in Go, that's a bit of an aggressive move as well. Does go ahead and take an extension from the wall. I would argue that it's too close, but this is definitely not an aggressive move. This is more of a uh, defensive move, more of a building move. So not all aggressive. Let's see how many times we can see that. Three, three points immediately. So I, my idea is simply to push and then maybe seal this off or approach or I don't know, even go back and play in here, whatever. None of that matters. He's ignoring me to take my corner. Aggressive move. So all right, just trying to just trying to get something here now, I guess. He connects to everything. All right, I suppose that's perfectly playable. Using this to make life. Because you don't want to just let your opponent get away with this and just be like, okay, I'm just going to do this now, I guess. And allow this, because this is pretty good. This would be pretty good for black. So I agree with reviving this stone. But it is an attack. It's an attack on these stones, an attack on these stones. It is an aggressive move. I'm looking for a base. He's looking to attack what I'm developing here. Aggressive move, once again. And now I would even say that this is actually a pretty reasonable result for white. I kind of like white's position here. But let's look at how it kind of collapses. The difference between what he played and what he could have played, for example, pretty big. He could have played just a small knight here. In order to build up, this would be more territorial. This is very, very, very aggressive. I poke, so I'm more curious to see what he does. I turn so I can limit this because he still has uh, this poke to worry about. So he's making not much territory. You can compare that to the other variation where he could have made a lot of extra territory just by keeping me small. Because if I respond to this, seriously, this is terrible. I mean, what? Is this really? Is, is that really why I built all of these all of these stones for this little chunk while he gets all of that? So, I mean, I'm not going to respond locally. I got something else. So even one will be pretty good. It uh, develops. Even something as simple as this might actually be okay, because the cap is still nice. He's got forcing moves in there. Whatever. Instead, we have aggressive move. This was a misread on my part. This was, a, this was an active misread. Huge, huge, huge active misread. Um, for some reason, uh, I don't know what I was thinking. I thought that for somehow we were going to get into this or something. And then, yeah, he can't like do this because we're good. But I think even this would suck, to be honest. I mean, I'm going to die horribly here. So even if he did exactly what I thought he was going to do, I'm in so much trouble. But he didn't do what I thought he was going to do. So I get to make some shape, I'm making some shape, and he's attacking me again. Is this the largest move right now on the board? I would say no. I could see an argument for maybe playing here, seeing if I respond to that. But I think it is really time to consider enclosures. If there's some kind of extension he wants, it's definitely time to consider that. Um, Going back and maybe grabbing the corner could be a large thing, though I prefer this one. It's definitely time for him to cease attacking because he's given me next to nothing over here. And this is just a Jiseki. So if he gets points right now, he's in a pretty reasonable shape. Instead, he's a... Come on. 
is that he attacks and attacks. Made a quick exchange. I lean out. Time to take those points. But instead he attacks and attacks and attacks. He's never backing off. He's never trying to get more points outside of what he can grab while he's poking at my shape. And at this point, the poke, poke, poke is a little bit of an overplay because you can slice right through this, as we can see here. I mean, if the goal is to trying to kill this, then this, these two stones with next, next to no liberties, uh, not a good way to do that. Uh, this, these two stones right here with next to no liberties after I play the Hane, uh, not, not a good way to go about that either. Cutting, again, super, super aggressive, but he can't really get away with it because he's just pushing me into this group, which is not alive yet. And still attacks, leaning over here because now we're threatening a capture, so he has to respond. This is actually Sente. I mean, even... Yeah, I don't, I don't even know how you handle this at this point. I mean, I guess you have to back off, maybe? And then just take this. Maybe you can keep the damage to a minimum. Maybe you can even go back and re-enclose me. Uh, hard to say. But you do need to back off. You do need to defend. You do need to take territory. Because you can see here, he's trying to juggle everything and keep maximum pressure on me. The result of that is this scenario where I'm again threatening to kill him. So this group is now out and it's been taken care of. His group is still in trouble. I'm defending myself, mind you. Now got nice little wraparound. Pushing here to defend against this cut. If he responds, for example, whoops then this no longer works. But I'm defending. I'm not going crazy and attacking him. I am actually putting in those extra moves to make sure that my uh, shapes are okay. He tries to enclose, which... Mm, wasn't sure if I was a fan of that particular move. It might be okay. I thought he would turn here. The jump out... Maybe. Now he's alive. That was actually a colossally bad move on my part because of that. Because this goes into here wasn't a smart idea, but whatever. But he's also going back and trying to kill me despite the fact... He's, he's fine now. I don't see a way to kill him. I mean, this right here. If I take, if I push, he takes... Can I get rid of that? I ever know? Uh-uh. So he's he's good here. He has Sente. He can easily go, I'm just going to make some territory. This isn't a pretty shape, but I'm going to use it now just to start getting some territory over here. Or uh, if there's Audrey in the corner, you could do that, but the left is larger. I mean, even... Even playing some extra defensive moves here might be okay if he's at all curious about the shape in here. There's just so many points on the board right now that he can take. That might as well be passing the game. So you can see the concept of balance over and over again. Like He was in a really good position where he keep a lot of pressure being firmly applied to me. But he's just attacking, attacking, and attacking. And the reason why that's bad is why we see this here. He has to defend himself. This wasn't a very good resu well, result for me. I've got to go and defend. He's trying to come in. Shoulder hit. Uh, should deal with it nicely. And now I really think going back and taking territory is probably a good idea. Is that he pushes, so he's never going to get this in Incente. Now I can even think about doing a one space jump before I could not. Gote, so I invade. And at this point, we can see where his territory is. Like, he had all that influence. He had a weak group that he did have the ability to attack in the middle. So we should be seeing areas of the board where he has developed points because of the strength that he had, the weak group he could have exploited. There should have been ways for or opportunities for him to, like, play away and take territory or attack for profit. 
Uh, instead, we see his territory is for a second line up here with some third line. Uh, this over here, and maybe this extension. This is, that's potentially where all of his territory is coming from this game. So maybe attack too much, or definitely not enough. And this is generally what happens with uh, players who are too aggressive and never back off, never get points for themselves, uh, all that sort of good deal. So I come out, I think around this point, I'm starting to have network troubles. Um, he's trying to save everything. I poke here because I thought maybe I needed it. Poke here because I'm after these three stones. Now we can push and cut. He defends, I respond. He's still needing to live here, which he can do. But instead he's trying to attack me again. This part maybe he's trying to attack me because he knows he's behind on territory, so maybe this part makes sense. Not Sente. Now this I back away from because my initial response was going to be to play here, but I thought, oh god, do I, have, do I have to like cut through here? If so, this is all Sente, and now my group has been cut off. I don't know if I could handle that. I mean, maybe this, okay, this could definitely die. But maybe the, uh, that middle dies now, and I wasn't really feeling that variation, so I backed out of it. I played here instead. I thought I could have uh, decent opportunities still. He goes to Ko. I connect on up. At this point, I am getting disconnected. I remember here is where I got. I really did get my first disconnection. And if you know me and Ko, I didn't think that was actually going to go very well. But it actually went surprisingly okay. So, Ko for life. He's trying to find threats, but I can threaten this group all day. He decided that wasn't a threat, and as a result, he's dead because of it, because there's nothing he can do. I don't think there's anything he can do. Um, uh, you can go here, I guess. But I don't see how he gets... Yeah, I don't see how he gets that. He can cut me off. Uh, but we just play here now to live, I guess. Yeah, I don't really see how he can get his two eyes here. So yeah, I think no matter how he played this as a continuation, he dies. As we see here, he cut me off, so I played there, and he resigned. So the result of this was he found himself in a very bad position because despite having a pretty good opening, uh, he just kept attacking, kept attacking, kept attacking, never backed off, never went for points, never defended himself, really. And that's just not something you can't do. Uh, you do need to strike that balance in your game where you do need to defend yourself. You do need to take the points because otherwise, if you just attack, 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 your, pro your opponent's probably not going to die unless he's got like a ton of weak groups. Probably not going to die. So what are we fighting for? Are we fighting over development? We don't really, we haven't really given ourselves potential to develop. So we're not fighting over that. Um, are we fighting to kill a different group? Because there was only the one group that was in trouble, so we're not really doing that. So the question is, what were we really fighting for? And that answer wasn't really found in this game. Instead, as he kept trying to fight and fight and fight, he had weaknesses of his own develop. And then since I had been defending myself, since I was okay with territory, I mean, I've got like, uh, you know, a nice big corner here. This thing is an embarrassment that we won't ever talk about ever again. Uh, this which could be a pretty nice uh, big corner as well. I was fine territorially, so I could be like, okay, I'm just going to go and push out a bit and see uh, what, what these weaknesses give me. And it gave me a dead group. So that was nice. So if you couldn't follow along with the lecture from Wednesday and were a little bit uncertain about what I meant maybe with uh, the whole idea of kind of like striking balances, I think this one kind of helps you see that in terms of 
uh, too aggressive play. Uh, but keep in mind, it doesn't matter if you're a too aggressive player or not. If you are just a defender, if you just like building, you're never putting pressure on your opponents, then you're kind of still guilty of this style because you don't want your opponent going around doing whatever he wants to do. You kind of have to stop it and break it up a little bit. Uh, if you just do that, you're also guilty of not really striking a balance in your play, and that can also come back to bite you, but for other diff other reasons. And hopefully I'll find a nice good game, uh, maybe in my own game or someone else's, that can help demonstrate that idea as well. But this one, I think it demonstrated it nicely. Hope you guys understand a little bit more about uh, balance, especially in regards to aggressive players and why that's not such a great thing. I will, of course, see you guys next time, and I do want to mention for any Europeans out there, the website for the 60th European Go Congress is already online and taking registration, so if you're thinking about going there this year, check out their site, see if it's for you. There are already over 300 registered players that will be attending this year, and I hear they're really, really excited about that. So make sure you check that out, and as always, I will see all you guys next time. Take care, everyone.